डियर व्यूअर्स ऑल पैनलिस्ट गुड डे टू ऑल एंड वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर द ग्रैंड वर्चुअल इवेंट ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ वर्ल्ड पल्सिस डे ट्वेंटी सो आर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन टूडे इज कोटा सिस्टम इंट्रोड्यूस बाय गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सिंस टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन सो लेट मी स्टार्ट विथ इंट्रोडक्शन माई सेल्फ एम संजय जैन एंड रिप्रेजेंटिंग टाटा इंटरनेशनल एग्री डिविजन एंड म्यांमार ब्रांच एंड अमॉन्ग आर टूडेज पैनलिस्ट आर director general from myanmar ministry of commerce and trade mr u min min mr u zom yomin md of diamond century a prominent trader and exporter of beans and pulses dr mi u md of tay yaza company reputed trader and again exporter of beans and pulses mr sunil patwari md of season overseas representing singapore international trading companies who do lot of uh, exports from myanmar of beans and pulses mr shyam narsaria ceo and head of myanmar branch of rv international singapore trading company doing lot of and uh, big exports from myanmar mr mukesh verma who's country manager of crescent developments again a singapore trading company and exporting myanmar beans and pulses so to start with the discussions my first question i would like to pose to uh, director general mr u min min sir how does the introduction of quota restrictions of government india has affected the myanmar beans and pulses trade and what what changes have been seen in the country export numbers and foreign and earnings sir please advise yeah thank you first of all um i'm uh, um uh, thank you for inviting uh, me uh, in in this uh, world pulses day uh, panel discussion um Uh, firstly, I, I would like to uh, highlight the India uh, quota system uh, based on the WTO Secretariat report of India Trade Policy Review in 2020. India's quotas for pulses and beans are uh, distributed on the MFM basics unless there is a memorandum of understanding (MOU) with the trading partners. So India imports uh, quota. Uh, of the quota of hundred uh, thousand metric ton of peas for three months in twenty twenty eighteen, with three times extension of different measures and announcement till March thirty first twenty 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 first. India give give reasons imposing the quotas process, which which was to protect uh, small and marginal farmers and to ensure their. Uh, food and livelihood livelihood security however it was consequently caused myanmar pulses and beans farmers face huge difficulties uh, fa- uh, because our pulses in- export mainly dependent on on in, on the indian market and significant amount of remaining stocks of pulses uh, this was very first measure seriously affected of our farmers during the past Three decades, although there were some import uh, policy change by India in some situation. As a result of this measure, our domestic market price has fallen down, and there were no buy and selling of pulses in the domestic commodity exchange center in all regions. Consequently, most of the farmers could not pay their uh, uh, their loan to the bank, and while they have Cultivated the new crops in the some major pulses production regions and states. Um, the the data uh, the um, Indian, you know, the as you you as you aware, Indian is uh, world largest uh, producers of pulses and counting for the thirty uh, percent of accounting uh, th- uh, for the thirty three percent. Thirty-four percent of area and twenty-four percent of production. Myanmar is the second largest producer, followed by Canada, China, Nigeria, and Brazil. Um, so, the uh, Myanmar has has been export uh, pea peas to uh, India nearly three decades, as I mentioned earlier. So, Myanmar, uh, the situation is uh, uh, the. Because of the the imposing the uh, quota, uh, 
uh, in 2019-20 fiscal year, our process export trend changed and China's become a top importer, accounting of 36% of the total process export. And India was in the second place, accounting for the 32% of total process export. Others are Singapore, Pakistan, and Indonesia. The top export items of process to India is uh, black mape and amount export exported in 2019-20 fiscal, fiscal year. Uh, <clears throat> to uh, conclude your uh, question that uh, the quota system has has really affected the, the whole uh, supply chain of Myanmar process and uh, being sector in, in general, but in particular, the farmers who grow Black Mape and Toho at the time, at, the, at this time had seriously encountered negative consequences. Uh, in the decline of Indian market demand uh, causes huge market surplus and as a construction of production and employment in the agriculture sector. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Umin Min. Uh, what I understand from your uh, suggestions is that basically India has gone from rank one to rank two in terms of the importing country for Myanmar beans and pulses. So we need to buck up, make sure that India comes back to rank one. My second question goes to Mr. U Zomyo Min, sir. What and how the quota system has affected the Myanmar pulse and beans traders and exporters? Please advise. Hello, everyone. I want to say that quota system really affected the traders, especially exporters. Because traders and exporters were panicked, so they are selling below cost price, and the price is so low that even producing cost of the basket is more than that. When this happened, there is a sentiment that we think we have to throw out all Toho and Blamabe that year at that time. But fortunately, there are some embolizing issues and the price a little bit up. And then slowly, slowly, we can do some business. But for traders and exporters, whatever we end previously for four or five years, we lose in one year in three months. So in my opinion, if possible, the quota system should be lenient. Another thing is the quota system, which is area it can import 200 metric ton or to hold 150 metric ton or 150,000 metric ton of Lamape and Brimabi each, but we don't know when it will be issued, when the miller from India can apply for the quota, when the government will release input permits, then there is another restriction that you have to import into India within 45 days. For last year, we have to ship 400 metric ton or toho in 45 days. 150,000 metric ton of Lamape within two months. The line is not coming out in time and we are waiting for the cargo to be exported out. But we are waiting, waiting, and then embolizing camp. Then it included, we have to finish loading within 45 days for all the input permits. See, 400,000 metric, 400, metric ton or two whole and 150,000 metric down blame up So you can imagine how the good system affected the traders and exporters. Trading is not smooth at all. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. So my next question goes to Dr. Miu. So Black Mape and Green Moon are one of the big volume production coming out of Myanmar. So has there been any changes in these two commodities in pattern of exports and the what has been the export numbers in the past two years? Hello to everybody. Welcome for Passage State 2021. Firstly, I want to review on India quota restriction on Myanmar passes. There are three major export passes to India under quota system. That is, 
or two who didn't be and remember me. Among these three persons, 80 to 90 percent of the Blumma Bear and two who regularly is food to India. For Blumma Bear, only small quantity is food to India. They are mainly is food to China and EU market. When India imposed quota system on these three persons, certain quotas of Blumma Bear and two who plus in Myanmar has big impact to our farmers income. At that time, we have to consider to number one, change crop instead of Brahma Bay and Toho. Number two, looking for new international market. According to change crop, we switch crop to green bambing and black eye bean, kidney bean, and also grain such as rice and meat and other new process for red pemum bean or pemum bean asupi. For this, Year 2021, we estimate the production of the map about three to four lab metric ton compared to the six to seven lab metric ton last three years ago. To who also one lab metric ton compared to three to three point five lab metric ton three years ago. But for green bumping, now about six lab metric ton, that is two to three lab metric ton last three years ago. Also, grain production also increased in production. But this is our estimate figure. Maybe the stock in Myanmar may be a little more before us. We are carrying on previous crop. So we can see the production of Brahmade Mape is significantly decreased and production of Grima is significantly increased. Our government, our Myanmar buses and being associated also celebrate workshop on our future development of Pasata attended by Vice President and Mr. Minister last two years ago. From the workshop, finding organ, we share information to our farmers. Our association also give market information to our farmers at cultivation season every year. This, that's 2020, 26, 10, 2020, we share message to our farmer to grow more black eye bean for this cost season. Now the price is very good now. That's all my discussion to your question. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So what I understand is basically uh, Tour Hole and Black Mape production has gone down by half to one third and Green Moombin production has increased. So thank sure, you for sure. this information. Uh, I would like to ask a question to Mukesh. Mukesh, does the farmers have really actually changed the crops on the ground or it is only on paper? And if they have changed on the ground, what are the significant changes you have noticed in the last one to two years? Please advise. Hello, Mr. Sanjay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the World Pulse State 2021. Uh, according to Mr. Sanjay, questions? Yeah, we have seen uh, some significant changes on the sowing of a farmer, shifting the crop. Uh, Mostly, uh, number one, black mapper sowing area. We have uh, seen uh, um, 20 to 30 percent of farmers are shifted to their uh, major crop, the green moon beets, and some farmer are start to, you know, <coughs> start to testing the red bamboo beans, uh, red beans, and then uh, how to say the yellow peas too. And then two area, we have uh, seen uh, very significant changes. Uh, just like the uh, past two, two, three years ago, uh, there was a, a white red bowl, a white bowl, uh, two hold, and then a double nose. These are not going sowing anymore now. So most of the farmers are changes to the change to the yellow, yellow, <coughs> sorry, yellow maize, and some are changing to the sesame seed. So we have seen a, a significant change in the two. And then it is uh, just for the farmer. It's not like a production house. They cannot change uh, uh, suddenly. Okay, this year they will change this one. So farmers are uh, just uh, trying to understand the pattern of the crops and then market situation. So since uh, India has input uh, quota, so farmers are slowly, slowly changing. Just like this year, ten percent. Next year, ten percent. So we have seen uh, changes. It's uh, truly happening. So thank you, Mr. Yes. Thank you, Mukesh. Thank you for this. Uh additional informations what you've given to us and the viewers and this will really help all of us to 
understand the impact and going forward what is expected from Myanmar. So my next question is to Shyam Narsaria. Shyam, what kind of impact these changes have actually made on the Indian local prices and the demand and supply in India? And what are the kind of changes what or whether these changes have really made any significant disruption in case of shipments of these cargoes? Please advise. Hello, Sanjay. Good afternoon. And I wish you all a great success for the World Pulses Day 2021. Sanjay, coming to your question, what uh, effect it has done on the Indian importers and millers? It has done a big impact. As you know, this all the commodities, it runs on the demand and supply factor. If there is demand, demand is more, supply is less, the price will go up. If the supply is more, demand is less, the price will come down. Because of this quota system, as we all know, the government allows from time to time, sometimes they announce for Black Map, say 150,000 tons, to hold, say 2 lakh tons, or sometimes 4 lakh tons. But the time in which they give the license and they allocate the quota is not like 1st of April. They can give any time, maybe April, maybe June, maybe September, as Hu uh, Jum Yamin said, that uh, whole license was uh, issued with a window of 45 days of shipment. Means not shipment, 45 days the cargo should arrive in India. What happens, the demand and supply, the this phenomenon is broken. Within 45 days, 70 to 80,000 tons tour hole arrive in one port. And because of that, all the buyers, they come in panic. Because of this panic, the price fall down sharply, as we have witnessed in case of first black mapte. Two months time was allocated for a quota of two lakh tons, 1.5 lakh tons. A lot of cargo arrived in India in short span. Because of that, the black mapte price, which was somewhere around 950 to 1000 level peak, it come down to current market, you can see somewhere around 725, 750 level. So 20-25% fall in such a short span of one month. Same in case of Turhol, it went up to $900 CNF India port, then it come down to 650 CNF level. So again, 20-25% fall in the price. This is not healthy for the market, for the traders and the millers also. Because the traders end up losing big money. Because this commodity trade, the maximum margin for the traders, I believe, is 1 or 2 or maximum 3% at time. If they lose 20, 25% because of the short-term fluctuation, long-term they cannot survive. Same to the millers. They are given quotas, they import the cargo, they end up buying high price, they buy, suppose, in $900 tour hole, and by the time the cargo reaches their warehouse, the price is say $700. They have no choice to sell the cargo to the end buyers in the market price, say $700. They also lose heavily. So because of this imbalance of demand and supply, because of the late issuing of the quota and no timely means, no fixed allotment, sometimes the government can decide, say, 2 lakh tons, sometimes 4 lakh tons, this, there is a huge difference in the prices so the millers, the importers, and even the consumers, they are also confused that last two months back, I see in the retail store, the price is 100 rupees a kg, and now it is 80 rupees a kg. Sometimes they see 140 rupees a kg. So I think it, the impact is very deep, and uh, we should uh, raise our voice. Maybe some people, some government authorities are uh, watching this. They should also work on it. Thank you, Sham. So understand from you and I agree to this that basically this uh, defeats the entire policy base of Indian government to stabilize the price and demand and supply wherein due to the quota restrictions it has gone just opposite way. So I feel uh, Indian government officials who are attending or listening to this panel discussions would take a note of it and arrange and advise for some corrections in the policy. Thank you. Uh, my next question is to Mr. Sunil. Uh, Sunil, how does the export pattern of various international countries 
have changed since 2017 of the introduction of the quota system especially we would like to hear from you in terms of uh, canada africa and myanmar please advise yeah minglava everybody uh, uh, thanks sanjay for uh, your question uh, i will just try to cover more from myanmar perspective because uh, this is more a myanmar panel how the export pattern of various international countries have impacted for the commodities which are turol mape and mung beans as far as turol is concerned uh, the most affected country the most affected is africa africa if you talk about countries other than mozambique mozambique got mou of close to 200000 ton it keep changing every year in increasing last year was about 175 so they have a quota they got quota more than what they produce so even the neighboring countries can supply them like malawi cargo comes to mozambique and get us exported so they are one of the most impacted secondly comes is myanmar myanmar has impacted like our panelist have told very clearly i also see like the varieties which were coming in the market chin variety and double nose and there's so many other varieties all disappeared people are switching and that's the way to go it's very very clear that's a way to go where we should not be dependable on the commodity where there are quota or restriction so two role definitely export pattern has changed totally and uh, the most impacted countries uh, number one would be country like tanzania where the productions are huge if they are lucky like this year okay they can make money otherwise they lose more heavily than myanmar they even didn't harvest the crop and the crop was selling like 150 200 dollars two years back so you can imagine 200 dollars is not even the seed cost so that was the impact so they don't want to grow but they are growing small quantities same with myanmar 350000 tons 250000 ton to 100 150000 tons so the export has heavily impacted mape still so far so good because only the volume is done out of myanmar there are countries who are producing like thailand and little bit coming from brazil now but they don't play at all role in black mape black mape means myanmar and india has been shortfall in myanmar and they have been giving quota they gave quota first round second round and you won't be surprised you'll be hearing the third round of quota for black mape coming anytime soon for the new financial year which starts from 1st april and they told also in some of the announcement that yes they will give some regular quota to myanmar so black mape on a larger extent has not got impacted but still myanmar have to learn and be cautious from this system that okay we grow if the demand is 500 we let's grow 300 400 if you grow less you fetch higher price so that should be the way coming back to canada because the products are different and it's more on the restricted commodities which is like yellow peas and other commodities like even myanmar now don't allow yellow peas to import into myanmar right myanmar price may be 700 dollars international market 300 dollars but still maybe they want to protect the farmers or whoever but they are not allowing import of yellow peas which i think they should allow i don't know why they are not allowing but it's a government policy so each government have their own policy for different commodities so yes uh, the export pattern has impacted uh, heavily and gradually most of the country will see their benefit first which myanmar have already started seeing and they should definitely see that's it sanjay thank you sunil thank you for uh, your insight and perspective from international point of view uh my next question is to mr u zomyomin sir uh we have heard in the discussion that tour hole and black mape particularly have not so big way uh, we would like to have what what uh, we would like to have from you what kind of numbers do you feel this year the production shall be in tour hole green mung bean and black mape Yes. Actually, the production of tofu this year is around one hundred thousand metric ton. Black mape should be four hundred thousand metric ton, and green mape should be roughly around six hundred thousand metric ton from Myanmar. Thank you, Mr. Uzomiyamin. So that basically says that Tour Hole has reduced its production from say three hundred thousand to hundred thousand, and black mape from six hundred thousand to four hundred thousand. 
and green boom mean from 300000 to 600000 the opposite way am i right in saying this sir yes sir because the green mean thank, thank you thank you yes. and tuam yama also so my next question will be to dr miu sir has the quota restrictions to change the crops which are more in demand across the border border countries like china and thailand and with the if the farmers have changed if you could throw us some light on which are the crops is the farmer now looking at uh, producing for these countries please advise sir yes uh, last we are changing the crop from the bema pe and to who now we are more produce the bema me and grain majority of grain and grain bema is for mainly to the china to border trade some quantity to our neighboring country like thailand and bangladesh to border also we are is for to eu market and asian country and other by versa they also increase is for to bema pe and to who to Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Dubai. For changing process in our country, some are uh, easy to change. For Prima Me and Green, we have no problem because we have a sweet and but for change to the new crop, our farmer have less confidence on new one. Our farmer and our trader still prefer to do Prima Me and do business because you can get back the information can trade easily at any time they, they also still have they also still have that come up and to go the man in india india still need to import for this process because of the have their supply and demand gap so that we have to change that new crop but here we have any difficulty to get the quality c from c market and also other market information for other item that we have to favor our quality c we need c market for market grind into a new crop we need to do counter farming now we all to get covid pandemic the most a fertile way to be to increase the personal immunity we can boost our immunity from plum protein so plum protein become important to in our community finally i want to invite look at international body to invest in our agriculture sector with have good opportunity not only focus on trading thanks for all sir thank you thank you dr miu uh my next question Uh, would be to Mr. Om Min Min, sir. We have heard you. We have heard all the panelists as well, and definitely there's a big impact due to this policy. We would like to hear from you a uh, few suggestions. What you would like to give to Indian government on what kind of changes you feel should be there in this policy, so that the business can be normalized and a regular and a stable business continue. news with india myanmar please sir thank you um i should say the uh, suggestion uh I, it should be the 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 india is the one of the our uh, neighboring countries and also the uh, the the, the long term uh, you know uh, the uh, trading partner so so we why not we should have the win win situation for the both both country um but uh, the 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 uh, the issues on the the quota system uh, india uh, uh when 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 we look at the 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 wto multilateral trading system uh point, point over point of view uh india's notification is uh, is policy and measures of purpose and being is still questionable for the uh for for the predictability uh for instance I mean, uh india has never explained the wto basics for its measure particularly with the uh, respect to quantitative restrictions it is better 
for us to clearly see the just justification of India for the transparent, uh, just for the temporary cure, given India has been in place more than two years. So a temporary measure is, uh, should, should not be more than one year, or maybe it should be the temporary uh, uh, measure. So India, uh, as, as India reiterated uh, its commitment to transparency and highlighted that it is the keeping, uh, it's not, it's, it's notifications up to date as depend, uh, developing countries. Uh, we want to suggest Indian government for future to ensure such kind of policy and um, measure to be predictable and for the members of the uh, uh, Myanmar and as well as the other uh, uh, trading partners through uh, binding and transparency, uh, which is the fundamental principle of the multilateral trading system. So, as you know, the members of the WTO have obligation to increase the market access and reduce trade distortion, uh, agricultural subsidies under the uh, agreement of agriculture. So uh, I would like to, uh, if possible, I would like to suggest uh, the Indian government, it should be to lift up the quota systems and allow the importation uh, of, of, for the, for, to get the markets, uh, market access for the neighboring country, for the importation of parcels and beans without any restrictions for the mutual benefit and stability of the buses and beans market in both countries. Otherwise, uh, the other important uh, suggestion is to sign the MOU on the uh, bilateral MOU on the uh, buses and beans trade uh, bilaterally with the uh, as early as possible. So um, uh, once the uh, Indian government would like to would like to impose on impose the quota because of the uh, the domestic uh, situation, market situations, and other measures, uh, it should be the maybe um, uh, sustain, maybe uh, one, uh, uh, trans as I mentioned, uh, predictability is uh, maybe next year, uh, how much tonnage will be, uh, will be allowed to import. So it is clearly see that, that farmers can be uh, as, uh, uh, some of the panelists already mentioned that they, they, they know how much uh, they have to cultivate for which, um, uh, which grain. So, uh, so it's kind of the win-win situation for both country. Uh, finally, uh, I, I also would like to encourage the, uh, the both uh, private sectors uh, for both countries have to uh, for further extend business network and to create a new business uh, B2B linkage with the uh, view, view to promoting our bilateral trade, uh, which will be ben uh, benefiting uh, for people and for the both countries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, definitely your suggestions uh, will be put across to the government of India and let us together jointly push this so that we can have a stable policy for the import of pulses by India from Myanmar. Uh, Sunil, we would like to check with you and ask you whether do you think, does it make sense for India to go back to the old OGL system and do away with the quota system since it is not, uh, 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 it is not giving the results what it was desired to be or whether please advise. Uh, Sanjay, I totally agree with uh, Omin Min. Uh, the OGL system is the best system. But I'm very, very, very scared with the Indian erratic system. They make it OGL and tomorrow night or tomorrow five o'clock evening, they say that with effect from today midnight, it is banned. <laughs> Everybody's cargo is on board and we all land up fighting. We all create dispute and everybody is at a counterparty default. We go legal against Indian counterparties. Who win? If India want to do such situation, if they want to have such controls, better to give 
quota we are not prepared we are not multinational we are smes we are not prepared for such shocks we have seen that shocks last few years and there are many companies has gone bellies up in singapore in myanmar in india people are out of job people are out of total business because of such erratic system they should come out with a clear policy if they want 100000 ton tell very clearly i want 100000 ton per year that's it five years if i want 200 tell 200 don't give surprises it's it's there as a surprise if they want they come if they want for a month they come for a month if they like six months they give for a six months this is not a correct way they give arrival which is beyond our control 45 days shipment and arrival with shipment take two weeks three weeks then arrival and lot of cargoes land up in myanmar one day late i had a shipment cargo arrived 12 hours late luckily it was black mape and after four months it got cleared because there were still quotas in the market otherwise what people will do is to re export for what so ogl is definitely definitely good the way to go but with the current style of indian government i am happy with the quota at least i have some clarity that there is a quota and i don't expect any surprises at least on this quota which i'm still not sure there can be still some surprises up so that's it sanjay thank you sunil uh, everyone is of the same idea <laughs> so but uh, definitely we are having this discussions to come up with the best suggestions for the both side countries business so mukesh tell us what is in your idea should the farmers or the should be exporters of myanmar be doing uh, having this quota system in place what do you feel would be a better way of doing business for them in the next two years please hello mr sanjay yes yeah, sir uh, we have a share same idea for the next few years india should announce a fixed quota okay and fixed quota and fixed duration okay so within six months we are going to be you know we are going to allow a black map how much metric ton and uh, we are going to be allowed to hold this much metric ton as like mr sunil said oh, they given a <clears throat> 45 days to hold and import four lakh metric tons and then uh, end of the time they extend 15 days again they extend 15 days again this is not a you know good way to and it's both side both side is losses because uh, uh, india side thinking over okay, this is the last date we we have a chance to buy or they bought it and then extension came claims barma has selling more so this will impact the uh, impacts on the both sides so the best way to this, fix the policy and fix the quota okay for next two year as uh, umin men said uh, better come with the mou each and every year we are giving a 2.5 lakh cost of metric ton of black mape one lakh metric ton of two holes so for a long time as as a neighbor country and looking looking policy india should fix a different quota for the myanmar thanks mr singh and but uh, you didn't answer my question what do you feel how the farmers and exporters should be doing to betterment of their business for the as for the farmers uh, burma farmers are you know uh, still uh, uh, how to say uh, we should uh, farmers should understand there is and some certainties of the you know india depend on the india uh, uh, import so farmers should uh, grow, reduce the bar, uh, depending on the india's loan and they should uh, uh, start to sow other international item just like gmb Uh, bamboo beans which are uh, this year or past two years very good at market rate and then the uh, <clears throat> for the india also farmer should uh, grow the mape and tur but the within the limits so as for the uh, my as by my suggestion farmer should uh, start to you know shift it slowly slowly different items thanks mr yeah. sir thank you mukesh uh so my last question for the session is to shyam Shyam, we've heard everyone. I would like you to sum up everyone's suggestions and give us a three or four point of suggestion. What you feel we can uh, convey to the Indian government side? A crisp one, please. Yes, I heard everybody, and I personally vote for open general license, not for the quota system. Let me remind that 
the beans and pulses production and export from Myanmar was started three decades back, recommended by the Indian Prime Minister. So I feel we had very good relation with India and Myanmar is growing pulses for India. So it should be open general license. India should realize it's close and very close neighbor. Now regarding this uh, measures uh, suggested uh, by Umin Min that we should have a fixed quota or we should have some MOU, that should be the second or third option. First option should be OGL, second should be quota and third should be MOU. This is I feel. Now, if we see the like last 2017, India introduced this quota system. The main idea behind this quota system was to stabilize the price. So we have to think, is it attained? Price is stabilized? No. Everybody knows. There is a short term, long term, heavy fluctuation in the prices. Everybody know India is short of pulses. India, as I mentioned, India is a protein deficient country. 73% of the Indian population is protein deficient. And moreover, 90% of the Indians do not know how much protein they need. Every year, pulses is short. They have to depend on import from Myanmar, Canada, Australia. So why not make it OGL? These are the commodities. Let the demand and supply factor run. Let it decide the price. Maybe for short term, there are some heavy fluctuations. But if it is OGL, overall, if you see the long time, say six months or one year, the price will be as per this factor. So these are my very few suggestions. And for the Myanmar side, I suggest, now Myanmar is growing and almost, I, I think it is a modern developed nation. All the, uh, like last 10 years, 15 years back, we do not have very fast access to internet. Now even the farmers, the traders, they are well connected to the world. They should keep eye on what what commodity, what product is in demand. Mema is soil is very fertile. They can grow anything. They have tried new things like they, like Mukesh told, like uh, Dr. Mia was told that uh, red moon bean is coming. That is a good try. Mema should keep on trying to explore new market and less dependent on any one market. Not I'm not saying India, but any one market. Like the I would like to say the export of processed pulses have increased almost two times or three times what it was three years before. So that is a good move. MEMA should focus on more quality products, value-added products, and focus in all the international market. That's it, Sanjay. Thank you, Sham. Uh, you have given the conclusion of all everyone, all the panelists' suggestions at the end. And I would like to thank all the panelists. I would like to thank all the listeners, all the attendees to this panel discussions for listening us to listening us patiently and hearing us out. And I would just like to sum up uh, before ending this session, I would like to sum up the final suggestions, what has come up from these discussions. So the first suggestion, I mean, let, let me go uh, first suggestions to the Indian government side. The first suggestion from this panel is that we should go back to the OGL system, wherein the demand and supply used to stabilize the prices of beans and pulses. And it also guaranteed that if the prices are uh, too much down, then the next year, the supply would be controlled so that the prices again come up and get stabilized. And if there's a high price of a particular commodity in a year, the next year, the production would be so high and supply would be more to ensure that the prices come down. The second suggestions what all of us have given is that in case if OGL is not viable and government wants to continue with the quotas, then that should be a predictable policy and a long-term policy in, for quota, wherein the quotas are being declared and allocated well before time and ensuring that the quotas are there allocated for a long-term uh, period 
maybe three years to five years. So these are the major two suggestions what we have for the government of India. As regards to the Myanmar side, what suggestions have come up from the panelists? I've just sum, up, sum it up. Basically, there are two suggestions. What I have summed up is first is that the Indian uh, that the Myanmar farmers should now look at additional crops, new crops, wherein they are not dependent on a, any single country, and that has different markets and international market available for those crops. So green moong bean is one example, wherein green moong bean can be supplied and exported to countries like India, China, Thailand, Korea, Japan, and so many countries. So it is not affected by any single country policy. The second suggestions what I found out uh, from the panel discussions on the Myanmar side is that Myanmar exporters also need to look at new markets. Predominantly, they have been just looking at India and China. But now with these restrictions coming in place and new crops possibilities, there should be more markets wherein the Myanmar exporters can export. They should look at South America, Europe, wherein more, more and more people are getting vegetarian and there will be more and more demand for protein crops. So thank you viewers, thank you panelists, and I hope everybody enjoyed these dis discussions and we all uh, wish a great success to World Pulses Day 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much.